I'm really excited to chat with you today. This is one of my favorite topics. Anything around technology and innovation and do you have the right technology and systems and platforms that help you answer the questions that you need to fundraise effectively and efficiently, I think is really important. Um, I am a solo entrepreneur for the most part. Good morning, Sam. And as a solo entrepreneur, if I did not have the different tools I have, Webinar Jam is one of them of what we're in right now, I wouldn't be able to nearly automate the things that I do to try and scale my business even as a solo entrepreneur. So I really take a lot of time in researching and trying to figure out and ask the right questions about the platforms and tools that I utilize. And a CRM is a big one um, for your organization and really understanding like, do you have the right tool for you right now? Is it something that you need to think about? So we're going to go through um, a self audit. We're going to want to make this super interactive. You know, I always do. So diving into the chat, we're going to have some poll questions. Um, we want this to be super informative and actionable for all of you to leave here. And um, then we're going to talk through some trends in the space. So if it's been a while since maybe you've been looking at the new tech tools, like what can you, what, what can you think about that you might need that you're not thinking about? Because it's just like, I didn't know that even existed. I didn't know that was possible. And then what are some of the things from thought leaders that they're thinking about when looking at platforms? And then we'll also share a post for you about seven questions to ask anytime you are doing a CRM demo or really a demo of any platform. So we're going to get into a lot of good stuff. Um, so I'm really excited and it's 1204. So let's go ahead and get rolling. Thank you all so much for being here. It's so great to see you. Shannon, Kelsey. Awesome. Very cool. All right. So let's rock and roll. And really quickly, just who the heck are we? <laughs> I am Dana Snyder, CEO and founder of Positive Equation. Hopefully most of you know me, but my jam is really trying to help you, A, reason why we're here, optimize your online tech solutions um, and your donor experience. So can we make the seamless a seamless experience for your donors? And a lot of that can be through technology, um, especially leading into giving season as we're starting Q4 in just a couple of days. So that, Gabby, you want to do a quick intro? Yeah, thanks so much for having me today, Dana. I am super excited to be here. And uh, thank you, everyone who's here, uh, whether you're you know, on the East Coast watching hurricanes or the West Coast, and it's just bright and early starting your day. Um, really just looking forward to talking with everyone. So yeah, I'm Gabby. I do product marketing at Instill. Um, I've worked in the nonprofit slash nonprofit technology space for about eight or nine years now. I started out uh, you know, I started my career in nonprofits. I did fundraising. I did a lot of programmatic work. I really loved um, volunteer management and working face to face with our supporters. And in that process was sort of when I accidentally fell into a passion for nonprofit technology and especially the technology that we use to manage the relationship building and cultivation and stewardship process. Uh, yeah, I say it was accidental because I, you know, I didn't set out to be really into technology, but I just found myself sort of constantly frustrated or confused by it and felt like there had to be a better way. So um, after working in nonprofits for years, I spent some time working at a nonprofit CRM company, Every Action. Um, and now I'm at this great new place called Instill. Um, if you haven't heard of us, don't worry. I'll uh, tell you a little bit about us as we go through the call. But we're a platform really uh, built to bring really modern, intuitive, sleek, beautiful technology to nonprofit work and decrease some of that frustration uh, and confuse, uh, confusement, if that's a word, that, uh, that <laughs> we'll take it. I think are, are used to feeling about that nonprofit technology. Awesome. Thanks, Gabby. And so I would just love to know, I'm going to start a poll for everyone. And I just love to know, do you feel prepared right now for year end giving? And I put the responses as yes, or like <laughs> maybe. <laughs> And totally be honest. Obviously, the poll is anonymous. We can't tell. Um, but I'm just going to leave this up. For, okay, we've got 25% saying yes, 75% saying, eh. okay, I love the truth in this. I think that is probably a very fair assessment. I'm going to give it one more second for everybody to get their answers in. 
And then, oh, yep, we're up to 80% now in the eh. Oh, 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 I'm seeing some active switching. I feel like this is like the elections where you can see the the gauge of what's happening. All right, I'm counting it down. It's still, it's changing a lot right now. All right, we're counting up five, four, get your response in. Three, two, one. Awesome. 66% eh, 33% yes. Okay, so we want to hopefully help you feel more prepared by the end of this webinar today. It's always what I try and do is do some actionable stuff. So with that, we really want to kick off with a CRM audit for you. So if you want to, we would love to have you do some of these answers in the chat. I think it's really helpful. We're here in community with each other. So I think it's beneficial. I love doing these like kind of like group audit assessments together because you might be like, oh, Sam, I saw Cindy's response. I'm really curious about that. So I want to like ping her afterwards to talk about it. So please feel free to respond to these in chat. Some of them will be poll based. Some of these will be chat based. Um, but we'll go ahead and Gabby, I'll let you rock it. Awesome. Um, yeah, to the 33% of you that are feeling awesome and ready for year end, big kudos to you. It feels like the uh, you know fall came up really fast this year. Um, and to to the rest of you, I'm, I'm right there with you. So let's dive into it and hopefully we'll boost that percentage just a little bit by the end of the webinar. Um, so yeah, first off, is your CRM working for you? That's the question of the day. Um, and that's a really deceptively tough question. Uh, so if you don't feel like you quite know how to answer that at the moment, um, you are not alone. Uh, these are really big, confusing pieces of technology uh, very often. So I have been in the boat and have talked to a lot of organizations over the past couple of years who um, just don't really know, you know, maybe no one at your on your staff currently has really had the time to fully dive in and learn everything that the tool does. So, uh, you know, you're using it, but you're not sure if you're really getting the full value from it. Um, that's super normal. Um, maybe you are getting the full capacity out of it and it still doesn't quite feel like the right fit, um, but you're not really sure if there's anything better out there or if this is just sort of what you're stuck with. Also, also really normal. If you're somewhere else just in the in the questioning land, um, we're going to start it off with just uh, just some big picture grounding and then really quickly we'll get into that nitty gritty audit. Um, so the question here on this slide, which came first, nonprofits or nonprofit technology? That's no brainer, right? Uh, charitable giving in an organized fashion technology. And that has really impacted the way that we do nonprofit work. Um, you know, that's a that's a no brainer. I remember one of my former coworkers who had worked in nonprofits for decades telling me about the first time that they started processing credit card donations and people were emailing their credit card numbers to her and she was writing them down in a file. Um, times have really changed, right? Um, and just to, you know, just to sort of illustrate the, the process and how this has impacted our work, we can look back to, I think, almost any of the significant milestones in changes in nonprofit fundraising and see that they're spurred by technology that wasn't actually developed for nonprofits. It's just technology sort of advancing on its own and nonprofits being really scrappy and creative and resourceful and harnessing that technology. One of my favorite stories there is um, about text to text to give technology. It's actually developed by the engineer at at and who developed American Idol's text to vote technology. After Kelly Clarkson, we've got a lot of things as a culture to thank Kelly Clarkson for. Um, but oh my she, god, I didn't know that that's where <laughs> it came from. But that makes total sense. That's yeah, nearly crashed AT and T's whole network with people calling in to vote. So they developed the technology for something totally different, um, and eventually nonprofits were able to get in on that and say, "That's great for American Idol. How can we use this for disaster response?" And so we had the birth of you know of that technology for nonprofits. So. Um, that sort of led us to what we have now, right? <laughs> the promise and the reality. We see a lot of promise of technology built to suit the needs of nonprofits, but with just the reality and, you know, we all know how this, this works, capitalism and where is money being invested in, in development um, over the course of technology. Most of the investment is going into things like American Idol or, uh, you know, or big businesses and corporations and nonprofits are finding ways 
to channel that for good. Um, but if it feels like you're in an uphill battle against your technology some of the times, uh, it's not your fault. So don't go into this process blaming yourself or your staff or the previous staff member who decided to buy this piece of technology. Um, the reality is that a lot of times today we're building our work plans and we're building job descriptions around the technology that we currently have available to us and making the best of it. So part of this audit is to step back and ask some bigger picture questions. Uh, bigger picture questions about what else could we what else could we want um, beyond what we currently have in our tech stack today. Awesome. All right, we ready for question number one? Yes, let's do it. All right, this one's going to be a poll, everybody. So, what kind of system or systems are you currently using for constituent stewardship? And I'm going to start the poll. So, is it nonprofit CRM? a for-profit CRM, are you using a spreadsheet or are you using a mix of different solutions? You should see the poll live currently. So go ahead and take a second and give your response. So is it the nonprofit CRM, for-profit spreadsheet, or a mix of solutions? As people are responding to, to the poll, I'll, I'll, I'll throw out here that as part of doing this audit, you know, I think the answers today are really helpful. If you really want to dive into this, I'd say the best way to do it is spend some real time um, talking with the different members of your organization. I think sometimes the the answer that, especially if you are, you know, an executive or um, you know someone who sort of runs the technology at your organization, you know what what database your organization has. Um, what you really want to know is: is there anything else your team is using that you maybe don't know about. Uh, my my girlfriend does consulting, um, technology consulting for a nonprofit that she worked for for several years, and she uh, you know she found in interviewing a couple of the teams about why she wasn't seeing a lot of work being done in the CRM uh, that all the work was being done in a in a handwritten notebook and a uh, you know a free online project management tool, and so no one else at the organization really had any insight into that except that one, you know, the two specific team members who were running their lives that way. So uh, some of you might uh, might even be using a mix of solutions that you don't even know about. It's really important to ask those questions and figure out, are there people on your team, you know, using workarounds and is there data out there that maybe isn't even being captured, even if you do have a central sort of CRM that you're using. Yeah, I'm really curious. For those of you that put nonprofit CRM, which nonprofit CRM are you currently using? And then B, there's 23% on spreadsheet and 35% doing a mix of solutions. For those of you that put mix of solutions, what what are you using right now? Just like comment in the chat. What are the different solutions that you are currently using? Um, and then we're going to go ahead and jump to question number two. Is your system user friendly? Gabby, would you like to elaborate on this? <laughs> uh, I love this one because it's deceptively simple, right? It's it's a yes or no question. How could you go wrong there? Um, but again, it, it, it's a lot more difficult than that. As I probably don't have to tell to tell any of you. Um, is the system user friendly? A lot of times asking, you know, asking your team, do you find the system to be user friendly is not going to get you the the whole answer. Uh, maybe it will. Maybe they'll say, no, I, I hate it. <laughs> um, but, you know, a lot of times it's going to be more complicated and maybe some parts of the system are user friendly. But again, they're using post-it notes or a spreadsheet for some of the other functions. Um, what you really, I think, want to look for in answering this question as well is, what sort of training has your team been provided by, uh, you know, by the vendor that you're getting solution the solution from? Um, maybe you got a really in-depth onboarding training, but your staff has turned over in the past few years and none of those people have actually received a training. So what sort of ongoing training and partnership opportunities are available to you? Um, even the most user-friendly system is usually helps to have some, you know, some pointers or some guidance for your team on how to use it. Um, but obviously there's a spectrum there. Can your team, can your team pick up and mostly use it without going through an in-depth training? Or is there really a lot of in-depth customization and learning that needs to be involved in order to do it right? 
Um, yeah. Something yeah. else that I think is really important here is there's, so I have a mastermind program and we went through like a donation audit and some of the tools I was like, there are new features and functionality probably being updated all the time. And is your team aware of those to be able to make the updates and the changes to your website or to the system that you need to do or to get new pieces of data or donor data? So to always making sure like from the standpoint of user friendly, also, is it user friendly to like update these necessary like features and functionality that might come up? Yeah, that is huge. Are you still are you still going through a work process that was formed because of functionality didn't exist and now it does exist, but no one's had the time or been alerted to update that process? Uh, yeah, that's huge. I love this. Robert says our CRM for the most part is very intuitive. Lots of vendor support. Awesome. Um, Shannon loves her Razor's Edge. They like different functionality in it. Awesome. Yeah, this is great for everybody to be sharing. And I want to jump into anything else on this question, Gabby? No, I think I'm good to go. Okay, awesome. The next one is, how often do you actually log in? So go ahead and put this one in the chat. How often do you actually log in to your CRM platform? Are you, are you daily? Are you multiple times a day? Is it once a week? Is it once a quarter? Are you like, shoot, I forgot we have one? <laughs> Where are you guys at on this one? I love this question to you because I think it really gets to the heart of is this data, is your supporter data driving the work that you do? Um, if you take stock of the technology that you do use every day, right, you probably log into your email every day. You probably look at your calendar app every day. Uh, those, you know, those technologies are driving the way you structure your day and your your CRM should be as well, right? It should be something that makes it easy for you to log in in the morning, figure out what's going on, figure out what your course of action is. Um, but a lot of times it it doesn't. And if you if you have forgotten that you had a CRM or it's been you know once a week, awesome, awesome. Yeah, we have nominal data in there. Need to import more. Yeah, and that's really important. We're going to get to that, Chelsea. About how, do you have the right data? What what I think about a CRM, um, and I have like a marketing dashboard that I use for my business. Is what are my like top three questions that I have for my business on a daily or a monthly or a quarterly basis? And can I easily? access that? Can I open it up and either pull a report or do a filter or something to answer those questions? So whether that's questions that you have personally from your job responsibility or from a board of director or an ED or whomever, like, is it like at the snap of my fingers that I can be able to pull it up, which I think leads nicely into the next question, which is, do you have an SOP, a standard operating procedure? Yeah, Gabby, shaking your head. Go for it. <laughs> this one is so good because it really starts to help draw that line between, um, you know, is the tool great, but we're not using it to its full capacity? Um, or is the tool bad? Maybe the tool is great and we just need to invest some time in figuring out how your team can use it to, uh, to make it really successful for you. And so, yeah, having a standard operating procedure having guidelines and expectations so that everyone on your team knows what sort of information that they're supposed to be recording, where they're supposed to be recording it, um, how they can access it. That standardization is what's going to make the database useful in the long run. When we have situations where one team member is recording all of their information, they're really detailed, others are maybe using post-it notes or their own personal planners, Ultimately, it degrades the value of the entire database because people know that the information is inconsistent. If I go into the into the database and I'm looking for information and maybe I'll find it, but maybe I won't, it makes it less likely that that's going to be the spot that I go to to search for. Um, and especially if you've been in a system for a few years, uh, maybe maybe decades, maybe a really long time. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of folks see this, right? We've got and it, again, it's it's not. It's not your fault. It's not your team's fault. Um, but having a standard operating procedure where everyone is sort of following the same playbook for what information we want to capture and where we want to capture it will over time give us a really rich database that has a lot of that information that we 
then want to use to to drive our work and personalize our communications. Yeah, I just launched a poll to that point. How long have you been operating in your current CRM or system? So less than a year, one to two years, three to five years or five years plus. So if you see that poll, go ahead and answer that. I think that's a really good point. Um, something that I remember I talked to Vic Harrison about, she's the co-founder of Charity Water, was there are certain platforms, and I found this even in my own business, that serve you for a certain period of time. And then you realize I am outgrowing this or something new has come on the market or for whatever reason, where I'm at doesn't serve me anymore. And I've realized that back to those three questions or back to the data points that I need, I need to reevaluate and like write those list of questions out that I want to have answered the data points I want to be collected. Um, new ways of thinking about personalization, which is really big. Um, and so, yeah, this is great. So, so far 45% less than a year, one to two years, 27%, three to five, nine and five plus 18%. I'll go ahead and share this with everybody. Um, what do you think about timeframes, Gabby? What have you seen? Uh, you know, it's it's all over the place. I think if you, you know, if you found a system that you really love and is really working for you, then great, you know, stick with that. What I see a lot of times is just that, you know, as we as we all know, nonprofit work is is hard. A lot of times there's long hours, there's never as much budget for more staff and more people as you want. And a lot of times, you know, that just means we're inheriting technology from our predecessors. Someone else bought this technology, someone else wrote the SOP. Maybe that was transferred to us, maybe it, maybe it's not. So I think that, you know, the thing to think about when you write, if you have had your system for a really long time is, is that still, is it still meeting your needs today? Exactly like you said, Dana, and are you, are you following a procedure that has been in place for a long time or does that need to be implemented? Uh, this yeah. doesn't mean that having, you know, having a new system, if you've just migrated to something in the past year, uh, you're not automatically, you know, doing any better. Uh, you're probably still, still figuring that out. But I think at, at any, at any point in your, in the life cycle of your CRM, it's never too late or too early to start talking about these procedures and making sure that it's working for you. The only thing I'll say about other legacy CRMs is just, you know, Dana, like you mentioned earlier, keep an eye on the product updates, see what they're yeah. releasing so that if you need to update those SOPs to include, uh, you know, new fields that have been added, maybe when you first started using, uh, you know, the technology, there wasn't a great way to, uh, you know, delineate between cell phone numbers and landlines, but now there is, that needs to be updated, that kind of stuff. So as the world has changed and technology has changed, um, make sure that your procedures are are keeping up with the updates to the softwares. Awesome. I love this next question because I was just talking about it. What are the top three questions you wish you could easily answer from your data? Drop them in the chat. What are those three top questions? I'm really curious to see if these are very similar amongst everybody or if they're pretty different. And I always say really dream big here. You know, a lot of us, I think, have questions that are on the top of our heads. Those ones that we're always pulling, you know, six reports and trying to compare them together to get those answers. Um, and those are great. Those are really important. Those are probably the information that we really need today in order to make good decisions. You know, as you're as we're heading in toward end of year, maybe you're thinking about acknowledgments, maybe you're. Uh, you know, a question, a question I talk about a lot uh, for the last couple of years with nonprofit friends is how do we put together like a, a Spotify wrapped? Uh, if you if you're on Spotify, you know what that means. If not, uh, it's a little personalized, uh, you know, letter from Spotify mm -hmm. about the top artists that you listen to and the top genres and just all this really personal information. Um, can we do that for our supporters? Can we not just say, here's how much you donated over the course of the year, but here's how many events you came to. Uh, you volunteered for 12 uh, and a half hours. You, uh, you introduced us to a friend through your, you know, your peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. All Delta of that Airlines does that really well for Sky, mm -hmm. Sky Miles members. If anybody else is a Sky Miles, they send out like an annual report. How many miles you traveled? This is where you've flown to. You, this is like you've gone up to silver or gold or whatever. I love that point. I love that. Yeah, that that personalization 
do we, you know, can we answer those questions for, for ourselves and for, and for our donors? Um, you know, definitely at this time of year, I think that's a big question. Other, other questions I, you know, I think I see a lot is around lifetime donor value. You know, if we're taking a look at the bigger picture beyond just this year, how long are our supporters staying with us? Um, you know, those, those big picture questions that maybe aren't at top of mind every day, but when we sit back and do strategic planning are really important. Uh, those ones are, are equally important to be considering when we're thinking about if our data is actually answering our questions or not. Yeah, these are all really great from the answers in the chat as well. And I think this like goes seamlessly to the next one, which is, do you know, sorry, I'm delayed. I'm reading it before I say it. Do you know why your community members are engaged with your mission? I think this is such a big one. Um, I don't think I saw anything. I did see, Cindy said researching relationships with members. Um, let me see. I'm just going to the chat. But I don't really see anything specific to this one. So, Gabby, what is what do you mean by like this question? I think this question really gets at uh, the you know the qualitative data alongside the quantitative data. And you know, if we go back to earlier in this conversation when we're talking about technology and CRM technology specifically, uh, you know, CRM technology was developed for businesses to manage their customer relationships, right? Customer relationship management. The original, the original acronym, and again, we've repurposed that for good. But um, a lot of the the foundational framework of this technology is built to process transactions and uh, you know sell things. And uh, if you hear, you know, the common complaint of donors feeling like they're getting treated like ATMs, when we all know we don't see our donors as ATMs; those are our partners in the work. Um, sometimes that comes because the, the technology sees them at summit, um, in Kansas city and something that was talked about a lot. And that I mentioned during my speaking session too, is around personalization of understanding why they gave. So if you have broken down, if they gave because of certain campaigns that were active and maybe you had a campaign that was focused on X in your organization. And so and they've consistently been giving to that campaign. Okay, so they're really interested in this portion of the work that we do. And they're not really giving over here to this. So therefore, maybe I'm going to segment them in our email marketing. I'm going to email them about this program area and not this program area. Like that's where this comes into play because obviously I'm on the marketing side of things. So and I've been, I am a donor of organizations where I've received emails about like a teen summer camp. And it's like, about signing up your teenager for summer camp. I'm like, I don't have a teenager. I did not, I supported this program because of joining like X campaign. It's like, I would have wished, because when I opened that email, there was nothing for me in that email. There was nothing that was helping me like learn more about like why I gave or like the program that I gave to. So it's like, we really need to, I think, start to think about how can we follow that person's journey and make sure that we're just not blasting everybody with the same communication? And can we track that in our CRM to make sure even when we're thinking about this is a great point too, social content. If you have certain campaigns or ways that you can track people that are performing really well, ooh, we should be creating more content around these buckets of things that we do. So everything from my lens of marketing, everything can start to inform areas of your organization. Does that make sense to everybody? Throw me down some exclamation marks in the chat if this is making sense to you. Because I think personalization with, with the diversity of donors is going to make a huge difference in 2023. I had a fabulous podcast conversation. It comes out in November with Woodrow Rosenbaum from Giving Tuesday. And it's incredible about what he sees in the Giving Tuesday donor because all of the CRMs provide their data to Giving Tuesday to do their report. And so they have a very robust data that comes out. Yes. Thank you, Kelsey and John and Sam. I love it. Um, it's so important. It is so important. And I'll tell you something like I sent out a, yes, personalization is super important. Yes. So because of the hurricane going on, I have done a couple different webinars. This is just an example. I've done a couple different webinars with Sarasota community nonprofits. So I sent out an email only to the Sarasota organizations yesterday, just asking them like, how are you? Like, are you doing okay? And I was honest. I was like, my family lives off of the university, which is a street. 
um, in Sarasota. And I was like, I hope everybody is staying safe. And I have gotten tons of replies because I'm not obviously asking my whole email list if they're okay. They'd be like, why are you asking me if I'm, I mean, sure, sure. I might ask you if you're doing okay. I probably should, but like specific to the hurricane, right? It's like, that's really important. If you could segment donors in Florida right now, hello, everyone, send an email just to your people in Florida and ask them, Hey, how are you? So simple. It doesn't have to be a beautiful email, just text only. It will make such a difference. That is just like one key data point, one filter point of connecting your marketing to your CRM. I digress. All right, let's keep going. I want to keep us moving. Let's go on to trends. So Gabby, where are we going from here? <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about it, right? I think what you just, uh, you know, what you just gave us was a perfect segue because we have seen so much more, especially I think through the last two years of COVID, leaning into personalization and relationship building, and everyone sort of got reminded that we're humans, and uh, you know, we we have lives outside of our work and our, you know, our passions. And we're just really leaning into connecting on this really human level. And I think, yeah, at, at conferences in all of my nonprofit newsletters, I just see so much talk about building relationships. And obviously we all know that, right? We all want to build relationships. I think really what we want to, you know, dig into is, how how are we using technology to help us build those relationships? You know, I think um, I heard a lot. I heard a lot in early COVID about just the shift in how donors were responding to appeals and saying, uh, you know, I, I hopped on a Zoom call with this donor. Usually we meet in person, but it was a Zoom call. And instead of the normal five, 10 minutes of small talk, we spent half an hour just talking about our families, our, you know, our, our kids doing distance learning, how, how we're doing really that, that how are you doing question, you know, that you just brought up. I, I just love so much because I think, uh, I, I don't think it's going away. You know, I think more and more we're realizing that that's such a foundation to, to connecting and yeah. to building a, a long-term relationship that of course we care about the impact and we want to get into the metrics and the storytelling to really show what a difference, you know, our, our supporters make in our work, but that, that, how are you? And that, you know, that building a relationship really goes such a long way towards opening up all of those other conversations. So I think really looking at how the technology allows us to do that is, is huge right now. And this is so perfect because this is exactly what you were talking about. Um, and this is, I think, a great a great way to sort of evaluate your technology, too, because almost every CRM or adjacent sort of piece of software will have some capability for you to do segmentation, personalization, and communication. So if you are feeling overwhelmed at auditing and figuring all of that out, Starting here is a great place to really dig in and you can start with, um, you know, figuring out if you need new procedures for your team, this is a great place to go. Um, or if you're doing everything right, this is a great place to start to look into, do we have all the segmentation and personalization options that we need? Um, or are there specific things that we're looking for that we're not getting and, uh, you know, we should look for somewhere else. So I think, you know, on, on segmentation, really important to take a look at the information that you're collecting from your supporters, right? Do you have the data to show you that someone is going to be interested in your youth summer camps? And, right. uh, you know, and someone isn't when I, I worked at a reproductive rights nonprofit, and it was great because we did full spectrum. We did a lot of work on abortion access, but we also worked um, with birth control, we did big campaigns for sex education in schools, um, and we worked on paid family leave, so some kind of economic justice issues. And some of our people were really into all four of those. I think that was four that I said, uh, and 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 some were less so. You know, some really focused on one. And so when I was, uh, you know, when I was sending out invites to the volunteer events, I wanted to make sure I had that information. So having the information like, is the first step. Yeah. How can you customize it? So I think um, one of the organizations that was in uh, actually two, and actually Cindy. I don't know if it's Cindy Lopez that's here. There's a couple Cindys in here, but I uh, we've talked about. Um, how can you customize the questions based upon what your cause is? So one organization that was in the monthly giving mastermind program, 
um, was called Celebrate RVA. And so they do birthday parties for kids in Richmond, Virginia. So one of her questions, of course, she's going to ask of donors is when's your birthday so that she can send out emails to donors on their birthday. And it falls right in line with what they're doing. Um, with Cindy, we talked about asking, where did you go to school, to college? Or did you go to law school? If you know that they're lawyers, so that you can sell, send out like customized information or bulk together, maybe all the Stanford people or all the Yale people or wherever that they went to school. So you can make it really customized based upon what your mission and your cause is too. Yeah. And I'll say the, you know, the next step of once you've got that information to, to segment and to personalize that communication is investing in creating content. And I think that's another, you know, big trend we're seeing is increased, uh, increased willingness to spend some more time, uh, you know, developing that personalized content for each of your different segments. So yeah. you have multiple different personas, uh, you know, that, doesn't help you all that much if you don't have the, you know, the ability to then create a slightly different email appeal for, you know, for each of those. So investing in just creating that personalized content is sort of the second, uh, the second step to take there. And the second trend we're seeing is it's worth it. We see it pay off time and time again, when you send out those, uh, you know, the personalized communication over the, you know, sort of mass one mass, size yeah. all communication you're going to see more people leaning in and, and responding back to you. Awesome. Next up, automate. This is a big <laughs> one. We love automation. Um, this one, this can be a touchy subject because a lot of times I think when we think automation, we think saving time, we think of some of that mass communication stuff, right? Like, oh, I'm going to schedule this email to go out to everyone. I think, um, what we're really what we're really looking at today in the world of nonprofit technology is automating in the places that we want to save time so that we have more time to invest in like creating that content, uh, writing your appeals, the things that really need that human touch. So using automation where it counts in order to really maximize the time that you have to spend doing the work that a machine can't do. So if you are spending hours and hours trying to pull reports together, you know, for for your board reports or your grant reports, if you are trying to trying to answer your top three questions, right, and it's taking a really, really long time, those are the places that we want to look to technology right. to save that time so that you can be doing the work that you really want to do. Yeah. And I think on this next one, Wasting time with current tech. Um, we're not going to read these verbatim. Um, but Gabby, as you are starting to like talk about what this means, I'd love to know in the chat from everybody, what is one thing that you wish you could do that you currently can't do? If, the, if there was like waving the wave the magic wand question, if there was something that you wish you could do in your CRM tool, what do you wish that it could be? And I'm talking like blue sky it. Like totally make something up, something that I wish, and I don't think any CRM does this. And I'm not sure, I'm not even sure if this is possible from like a tracking standpoint is uh, for social media. I would love to see in a CRM, like ping, like these people just either followed me on a social platform. They engage with a social post. Again, I'm not sure about the API and the connections and all the data of what Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever would allow. But how amazing would that be if it was like, oh, Dana just followed my organization. This is a great time to send her a DM on Instagram because that's where she followed me or something like that. Something that's a little bit more like predictive and responsive. So yeah, as Gabby is doing this, yeah, let me know in the chat what is like your wave a magic wand and blank could happen. I love that. The, the sky's the limit is what I always want to say is, uh, you know, we're, we're in a world now where nonprofit technology is being invested in, right? We have, we have multiple companies who are building and developing these things. So now is the time for, you know, for nonprofits to be able to guide that process, you know, and no longer has to be defined by the needs of corporations, uh, you know, who are primarily driven by profit. We really have the opportunity to, I think, dream big. And yeah, as you see from the quotes on the screen, there's, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of timing wasted, there's a lot of frustration, there's a lot of unanswered questions. So 
the, uh, you know, I think this is a, a great, a great time in just the evolution of technology and nonprofit technology as well to really ask for those big, you know, those big questions. And maybe, maybe, maybe it is possible. Maybe it isn't. Maybe some of it is possible, but we, you know, we don't get that innovation without asking those questions and, and really, you know, sort of demanding, demanding more from, from what we have. And, yeah. you know, we keep seeing advances in technology every day. So, guiding them in, you know, in the direction that's going to serve nonprofits, I think is, is so, so important for, you know, for the nonprofit sphere to just continue to, you know, we're competing, we are competing with corporations for, you know, attention and totally. funds. Um, so keeping, keeping up on the technology front, I think is, is so, so important. Well, I think everyone likes my idea about social media being integrated. So that's a, that's a note for, uh, in still. <laughs> I'll, I I'll do be have to show that you guys on. though. <laughs> Um, I would love with the last like few minutes that we have Gabby to dive into, I want you guys to see how dope their platform is now. And whether or not you're using Insta, would use Insta, whatever, this is meant to be an education session for you to like challenge the system that you're at, like ask them for certain updates if you want, or do you need to switch? So, like, I want to go ahead and I will stop the slide presentation I'm going to put up, we will allow you guys to book a demo with Insil. You can click the link now while Gabby goes ahead and gets her screen share up. But when one of the things that I love is when platforms come to me and they ask my opinion on things, they know that I'm going to analyze the crap out of their platform. <laughs> so there's been things since my first call with them that they've already upgraded and like changed, which to me is amazing that their developers are working so fast to listen. But A, you can just tell from the look of this platform, it's fresh it's simple to the eyes the emoji use it works kind of like a trello board of drag and drop anyways gabby i'm gonna let you take it over because i'm just gonna stop talking <laughs> that was great you could you could do this all on your own um thank you thank you so much uh dana um yeah so like i said and still um is fairly new just launched in 2020 but we've been building really, really fast. And I just want to give you all a really quick look at it. It's not a sales pitch. Uh, so hang on with me. I really, uh, you know, want this to be just inspiration. And we love we love your ideas and feedback as well. But just to hit on some of the points that we talked about just earlier, first of all, building relationships, uh, this Trello board style of a, uh, you know, what we call our life cycle boards is really an attempt to bring that human element into relationships. So you see, we can make a different board for any of our teams or projects, but really it allows us to zoom in on where our constituents and our supporters are in the process. And, uh, you know, I've got a really easy insight into, you know, when was the last time that someone was contacted? Uh, we were cultivating them, but it's been, you know, it's been a few weeks, maybe even a few months since the last time we reached out. Um, right away, that's a flag to me. Let's, uh, you know, let's make contact and hopefully keep moving them through the process of the, you know, cultivation, requesting, and ultimately stewardship. Um, and they're, you know, fully customizable. So you can add as many stages as you want. I, I love this visual aspect. I think of when I was, you know, managing volunteers, I would have loved this um, to just keep track of, you know, where, where folks are. I can really easily pull out my, uh, these people come every time, send them the thank yous versus, a uh, new person has come twice now. Let's reach out and do a one-on-one -on -one so we can continue to build that relationship. Um, we can also really easily zoom in to an individual constituent. And this really powers your segmentation, right? Having the having all of your data in one place. So uh, the first page of a constituent, I'm going to see their activity feed, right? And this is, you know, I don't think we have social media yet, but where you will see the the ping of what what the most recent thing that they've done was. We see right here, you know, uh, we had a phone call with her. Great, we're we're in touch. Uh, she just contributed this month um, some very high value volunteer time. So I can see that there in the uh, in the personal info section. I've got all the information that my team has collected about um, who who Amanda is, why she cares about us. Um, something I love is the connections. We've got people that she's connected to. Um, we've got her family information if she gives as a household. So we can really get a full picture of Amanda and use these fields to um, to conduct a personalized outreach. We've got um, over on the side, I, you can see the labels and categories. Those are all custom so that, 
I can segment her into, you know, communication that is just for board members or just for our champions. Um, and then really quickly, before I let you go, I'll show you some of the reporting. And this really goes into answering those questions, right? That automation, getting the data that you need fast. And so um, I really love how we've built out our reporting to be very clear. It's very easy to drill down into, uh, you know, what restricted gifts have I got this year or over time? I'm going to click into the report and really easily get that information. I think this um, is really great too for forecasting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if you were like to look at the breakdown of donations by type and be like, okay, we were really strong on our recurring giving. I, that's a, you know, there, there's tons here. I'm not going to go into all of it. Um, there's m many more reports than that. You know, if you're looking for really easy access into your, your live and your side donors, you know, folks who have given last year or given some other previous year, but need to be re-engaged this year. Uh, you know, if you're looking for the priority audience for those year end campaigns, who are we going to send our appeals to? Um, just making that data easy and fast so that you can spend your time writing the appeal and not pulling the list right. I think that's really, uh, you know, what we're going for here is that, uh, you know, that saving time where it counts so that you can spend your time where it counts approach. Um, like I said, there's a lot more in here, but I, uh, you know, if you want to see more, we're happy to talk to you one on one. Awesome. Perfect. So there was a question um, that came in from Lisa that was separate. So it was, which nonprofit CRM do you recommend? And honestly, I mean, up, we're here with Instill, so I would definitely check them out. But I would say I'm going to put this into the chat. These are seven questions to ask during your CRM demo. You really need to think about what is best for you in the period of growth that you're in. Is a certain nonprofit is a certain CRM going to benefit you right now or is it too much? Is it too big? Like you don't need that yet and you need to like start here and start smaller. So that's a very individualized question to be honest, Lisa. I would say go through, start to think about um, what I just put the blog post in there. Um, actually, did that go to everybody? Hold on. I don't think it did. Let me, I think it went straight to Lisa just in case. I'll send this to everybody and I'll send it out in the email afterwards too. There we go. So seven questions to ask. Um, yeah, it's very specific. Really think about what your individual needs are. What, everything that we've talked about today and currently like auditing and assessing. I hope what this has done is create some brainstorm for you and like got you thinking a little bit about what you mean, what you might need to evaluate. Um, but yeah, that would be my answer to that question. Gabby, anything else? I totally agree with what you said. Obviously, I work at Instill. I love Instill and I think it's really cool. It's not a fit for every single organization out there. You know, I think what you when you're on demos, definitely check out that list and ask those questions to get to the heart of your needs. Um, you're really looking, you know, for a vendor that meets your specific needs. Um, we would love to talk to you about if that is in still. Um, sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't, depending on what you do need. I think those questions are are a good um, starting point for yeah. just getting ready to uh, plant the idea there for, uh, for, you know, the technology companies to see um, and, and see what they have to offer you. But ultimately, yeah, it, it's, it's very, it's very individual. There's going to be different best fits for every nonprofit. So, uh, you know, some people may really love their CRM and other nonprofits use the same CRM and absolutely hate it. Not necessarily <laughs> a reflection on the CRM, right? It's, it's about your individual needs. Totally. That's awesome. Uh, Gabby, thank you so much for joining us today. Everybody that's here, thank you so much for your time. We will send out a replay of this if you want to share it out with your team um, with the resources that we shared today as well. So everyone, thank you so much for joining um, and have a great